Hello everyone, just quick uh, short video about Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction because that's the next topic uh, for your next assignment. Faraday's law um, is one of the most important, or gives us one of the most important relationships uh, that, that you and I sort of depend on because you and I um, depend on electricity. There are so many things for which we use electricity that we can't really imagine our life without without it. So it's good to know how electricity is created. Um, not that you might find yourself in a situation where, where you're, you yourself would need to create electricity, um, but um, it's one of your TSWs and uh, I think it just should be a, a common knowledge because it is so simple and um, and in the same time, um, you know how it is with simple things that um, even they are, though they are so important, uh, we often don't appreciate them that much. Like in the same way, we don't appreciate shoelaces until they uh, they break, and uh, we don't appreciate toilet paper until we run out of it. Um, in the same way, we don't appreciate Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Um, this law tells us uh, how to generate electricity and it basically states that to generate electricity all you need to do is you need to change the amount of magnetic field um, that goes through a closed loop a loop of wire it should be a loop made out of a conductor you could actually generate uh, electrical difference electrical pressure difference on uh, ends of a loop made out of wood but you wouldn't get any any electrical current to flow through the wood because a wood is a, uh, an electrical insulator. So take a, a conducting uh, material like uh, copper wire and then take a magnet. Here I have two iron magnets uh, just attached to a, a knife. And the Faraday's law just states that in order for voltage difference to be generated at the ends of these two two wires in here. I just need to change the magnetic field and that's the important thing. That you, the magnetic field through this loop of wire has to be changing. And I can do that just by you know moving the, these magnets around the, the loop. Uh, I can do it like this by moving the magnets through the loop or I can just move the loop around the magnets. And I'm generating voltage difference in here. The important this relationship sounds very, very easy, you know, very, very simple. And you can ask yourself, is it really that simple? And the, the answer is yes, it is that simple. Now there, are, there's a mathematical description that states, uh, you know, how how this happens. And the important thing, I guess, to to remember in here that the amount of electricity, electrical pressure difference, voltage difference generated here, is proportional to the rate at which the magnetic field changes so the speed how fast this is happening so the faster you can move the loop you know if I do it like this fast I'm generating more voltage if I move the magnets faster I'm generating more voltage now so the faster you do it the more voltage you're generating also if I use two coils of wire in here or three or four coils of wire, I would be generating more more voltage. If I use stronger magnets, I would be generating more voltage. Voltage. So it's a sort of interplay of all of these little variables. But the important thing is that the magnetic field has to be changing. If I just hold the two next to each other, um, there is magnetic field going through the loop, but there is no change in that magnetic field, and so there will be no electricity generated here. Uh, when we do this on a, on large scale, um, you know, it's 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 not easy to provide motion like this, but it's sort of much easier to provide a rotating motion. So having the the magnets rotate like this, you know, just attach to this uh, shaft, just atta attach a, a windmill in here and have wind blow against it and it will be turning and spinning the magnets inside the, the loop. Or put a water wheel here and have some water fall on the wheel and and move it. In a power plants uh, that burn coal or fossil fuel power plants, in nuclear power plants as well, we basically heat up water, we change the water to steam, and then the steam is blown against a wheel. So the steam turns the wheel and that turns the magnet 
inside of the loops. Of course, you use much stronger magnets, much bigger magnets. You use uh, many more coils of coils of wire. The, it's it might seem that it's it's strange that just by adding more coils of wire, because I'm not doing anything differently, I'm still just turning the magnets. How how is it that out of more coils of wire, I would get more voltage? It seems like I'm getting something for for nothing. It turns out that if I had two coils of wire in here and I did this, there would be twice as much resistance uh, to you know how how difficult it is to move these wire in and out. Um, the mathematical description tells us that um, the the voltage generated in here, um, or the current that will flow through the wire, uh, will go in such a direction that the magnetic fields generated in the wire by that current will be opposing the magnetic field or the change of magnetic field uh, by this magnet. So, I mean, there's a lot more details in here that we could talk about, um, which is very interesting to me. Um, you know, in nature you never get something for nothing. So, it should make, it should feel sort of natural that with two coils of wire or three coils of wire, it's going to be twice as difficult to move the magnets in and out. Um, well, it's sort of the, the way nature works that um, you cannot create energy or you cannot destroy energy. You can just, you know, change it from one form to another. And so, whatever you put in, whatever effort I put in with the, with the magnets, I will never get more electric energy uh, than the energy that you know, if this is a wind moving the the magnets, the wind carries some kind of uh, some amount of kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy is changing into the electric energy. So we're not really, you know, creating electric energy. We often say that we are generating electric energy, uh, but we're just changing some kind of energy, usually kinetic energy of moving water or moving air or moving steam, to um, energy of moving electrons uh, in, in copper wires. We're not creating electric energy, we're just changing uh, some type of an energy into electric energy. But the principle is very simple, just change magnetic field through a closed loop of wire and you will generate uh, pressure, electrical pressure difference, voltage difference at the ends of the wire. And the faster you can do this, the, the larger is the 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 rate of change of the magnetic field through the loop of wire the more voltage difference you will produce thank you mr faraday